And Macklemore's Big Surprise, the TV special from 2013. Fucking. Yeah, but this time it's like made of some weird, like, it's got like arms. <laughs> Black Adam starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson will be. Welcome back to Off the Air. Bill featuring Lee. special guest, Krampus. Oh, hello, Krampus. Everybody cheer. And Yay. this is where Noah, who is not here, will insert the applause. Noah will not do the, the best part. The, so here's the thing. Noah's not here to tell us he's not going to do these things. So I think I think we take the entire episode as much as we can make possible. such unreasonable demands. Exactly. I think we as much as possible try to give him just ever more increasing demands. Yeah. And he's going to get back from his trip to Nashville and be like, that was such a nice time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> luckily, I didn't have to record. But, you know, I, so I got a little time off from that. But I'm going to edit the episode real <laughs> quick. And he's going to just listen through it. And within the first 10 seconds, Noah, edit an applause. Noah, we're going to make unreasonable <laughs> demands. And, uh, and he's not going to do it. He, what he actually yeah, gonna... what he might do is right right about here he might do a cut and put in a little message for him saying i'm, I'm not, not gonna, gonna do, do any of those things. things and then we'll come back and it'll be it'll be like nothing happened yeah who knows who, well, i got who... krampus here as our special guest krampus what do you have to say for yourself how does krampus feel about current world events you don't want to know. Oh, it's actually man. pretty rough. Yeah. Krampus has some real uh, rough takes. Krampus has a really strange take on the whole Kanye West situation. <laughs> Wait, is something going on with Kanye West as well now? I don't know why I invited her on, but she's like, been just talking. I like she's that that's going the, only, the only thing she has takes on. Like, she's very unfamiliar with like the world as a whole. But Kanye, oh my God, does she have opinions? And she's going <laughs> to tell you about them. I don't want to say it. <laughs> I don't want to like pretend my cat has like these insane <laughs> takes, but my like part of me wants to be like Krampus is like it's just a shirt. <laughs> oh Krampus! No, that's that's not true. Krampus is very reasonable. She's just a cat. Uh, oh yeah, Krampus is my cat. I didn't say that until like now. I, I mean, if, listen, people who people have been have know. the people know the people know. You know, you know, I have had quite the week. What is your week been I, like? Do tell. You know, I had food poisoning for a lot of it. How did you? I, I did. You did mention this. You mentioned before we started that you had the salmonella. Yes, I am. I, I didn't go to a doctor and get officially salmonella pilled. Um, but <laughs> Based like in salmonella it's, pilled. It, it's like eighty five percent what it was. I, um, I'm pretty sure it's just I got a frozen pizza and just didn't cook it enough. Um, that's that's my got my going theory. It didn't. You know, taste wrong when I ate it, but like immediately after I got sick. Um, so like a, just a few hours later, and then uh, yeah, had all the symptoms. Just was like out in like the worst possible way for like four days straight before like a really really big weekend for me because mm. the the home opener weekend for the otters. So that was yesterday after having basically like struggled for five days straight. What did you just do? Um, okay, you might have to go. Yeah. No, you, you might not be a good guest, Krampus. I can't believe Krampus is actively trying to sabotage the podcast. Yeah, she's chewing on my headphones, and she just, like, knocked something over, and I don't know what it was. I think it was my PS5 controller. Krampus, uh, I'm sorry, you you have been taken off the show. You are being officially removed. Voted off the island? This is the first time ever that a, a, a guest has been removed partially through an episode. <laughs> Congratulations, Krampus. You have made a new record by being is removed a new... four minutes into the episode. <laughs> Krampus is a new official enemy of the podcast. I, you know, I, I don't want to say it, but that behavior and the things that she said. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's it's got to happen. Bad takes about Kanye. Uh, bad takes about the war in Ukraine. Attacked my headphones. Attacked your headphones. Really? That's the worst of the things. The, yeah. Those three things. And like, come on. <laughs> those three things equal. <laughs> <laughs> Those three things the same to me, the guy whose headphones it was. <laughs> uh, so anyway, th this um, well, I, anyway, I had food poisoning. So yeah, I was like poisoning. real bad out of commission, like just in a rough way for like days. And then the day I start feeling better, I've got to work all day at my normal job. And then go from there, and there's an away hockey game that night, and I've got to produce all the features for the show I'm running the next day. And then the show I'm running is the next day, and there's like a big festival and also the hockey game. So it was just like a huge weekend, and like the four days leading up to it when I needed to get everything done, I was like borderline bedridden and like 
could not hardly walk. Oh, buddy. <laughs> I was like, man, it, it, it's been a week. It, that sounds extraordinarily rough. I am, I am but, sorry you had to go through that. And there's a big butt here. Is it yours? It's not. Damn. It is <laughs> the, the, the butt to the situation that makes it all worthwhile is that before you know it, Black Adam starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson will be in theaters everywhere October 21st. Do we do people care about that movie? No, but that's the bit I've been doing lately where I'm playing the character of a guy who is really, actually really... excited for Black Adam starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Like, here's the thing. I I'm not I'm not like against it. Like, it's fine that it exists. I just I don't know anybody that actually cares. Precisely. That's I, why I've been retweeting the ads for it. I've been sharing the <laughs> oh TikToks my God, is with it everyone. You? It, you're the one that keeps showing up. I thought it literally was ads for Black Adam. Like, I thought uh, it was just I, my Twitter. I mean, they are. My I'm Twitter, just retweeting my, them. My Twitter thing has just been. Uh... Yeah, no, I like to retweet ads from Black Adam. I like to send people the TikToks um, for that are ads for Black Adam saying, yo, this is so cool. Um yeah, that's just been like my thing for the last couple of weeks. Every like few hours, Nina and I will be on a shift together. Uh, I'll just look over at her and be like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. We only two weeks left until Black Adam starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson hits theaters. It's a good um, bit. I'm it's not a great lie bit to you. because no one gives bit. a shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that's a pretty co- I, I can say relatively confidently that I don't think I know anybody who's like really, really excited for Black Adam. And, it's like, me- and there, again, there's nothing wrong with being excited for Black Adam. Like, I just can't I just can't possibly care. Yeah, it's like, look, I get it. I I mean, genuinely, since I was like a kid, Dr. Fate was like one of my favorite superheroes. Mm-hmm. Like, I just always thought, like, it's cool. I'm like, imagine like a helmet that like is just makes your life shitty. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, imagine you're just like a guy and you put on a hat that makes your life suck. But you get some powers. Um <laughs> So I always just thought like Dr. Fate was cool. Also, I just thought he looked cool. I mean, that's um, Dr. Fate is pretty cool. Yeah. B- big helmet, uh, magic powers, just kind of floating, T posing all the time. I'm kind um, of a huge fan of the big sick. helmet, magic powers. Like, like you got that. You got Magneto, who is, a, I mean, oh, yeah. obviously he doesn't get the powers from the helmet, but kind of the same vibe. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like the helmet gives him powers, but big helmet, magic powers is pretty cool. You got modern day Doom, who's like, I think actually just a wizard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I've always liked any character that's just like a a guy in a big helmet who's like, magic. yeah, no, yeah. I'm here for it. I get it. A little cryptic, a little cryptic, little little cryptic, little magic. Yeah. So anyway, um, I I think genuinely it might be a pretty cool movie. It's got like Hawkman and Doctor Fate in it, and I and I like both of them. Mm-hmm. But it's like no one cares. Yeah. No. That's that's. I think that's that's my problem. Is that like I cannot bring myself to care at all. Like yeah, nobody like nobody cares. It's like it's just superhero movies are kind of reaching their conclusion. Yeah. I mean, it's the writings on the wall. Yeah, um, they're going to force it. But who knows? And unfortunately, like, I don't know a good like DC movie that's been in like their cinematic universe. I actually like the second Suicide Squad. Oh, no, that's was a- that when I, you know, I've heard that was actually pretty good. Was, I have not seen it. It was fine. Like, well, it was OK. The first one. Uh, just bad bad times at the El Royale right yes very uh, the second one was was fun like the the one that's just also called Suicide Squad good times a lot yeah, of no, I, I, had uh, polka dot man which like yeah you made a polka dot man in, in a, as a movie character that's fun it's a good time so I mean maybe maybe there is hope then I There's think not. you know I, I did watch I watched Birds of Prey oh in theaters. Bir- uh I can't remember I did watch Birds of Prey I, like Birds I watched of Prey. it in theaters uh, with Emma, actually, and uh, Noah, and Nina, and Jeff, Aww, and Edge? Time. Question mark. And somebody and else. And maybe Jeff was Jeff actually there? Jeff Edge. Was Becca same there? Per- I don't, same person, you know, really. I know Emma was there, and I'm. I know Noah and Nina were there. Hey, it's it's been a while. That movie came out like three years, three ago. four years ago. Yeah. Um, I went with the Dietzes and Emma, <laughs> and then myself. <laughs> We went to to see Birds of Prey, and that was, uh, you know, I thought fine. it was good enough. I yeah. thought it was pretty, yeah, like for, passable. Like, yeah, perfectly passable as a movie. Uh, I think, I think the problem we're running into is that we kind of so like we had that that period after the first Batman movie, right? Or after not Batman, after um, Dark Knight, the first Dark Knight movie, and then everyone's like, "You guys, what if we made gritty superheroes?" Right? And the same thing has kind of happened with I feel like movies now, except it's guys. What if we made superhero? 
comedies. And I just yeah, they're like, what if we made him quip? What if we made them quirky and funny? And that's great for a Spider-Man movie. A Spider-Man movie should be quirky and funny. It's fine after that. We're good. We got what about to... Black Adam starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson in theaters everywhere October 21st? Man, when does this episode come out? This episode comes out, comes out before October 21st. D- Black Adam starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson will be in theaters everywhere October 21st? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Black Why Adam. would I lie? Why would you lie? You think I haven't retweeted enough promos to know the date the movie is released? <laughs> it would honestly be way funnier if you hadn't, to be honest. I'd be very disappointed in myself. I would, I would think that is comedy gold, to be honest with you. No, it's got to be. I'm, I'm looking it up now because I don't want to, like, there's no way. Oh, the Black Adam trailer? Sorry, I got to watch that real quick. No, go I'll for be it. right back. This, this report, takes priority. Report back. Report back. Yeah, this is, the mo- this is more important. Uh, no, no, I'm actually not going to do that. <laughs> um, Black Adam. Oh, yeah, you're right. I wanted the Wikipedia article for the character and not the movie starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Because why would you? Nearly 5,000 years after he was bestowed with the almighty powers of the Egyptian gods and imprisoned just as quickly, Black Adam, parentheses Johnson, and parentheses, is freed from his earthly tomb, ready to unleash his unique form of justice on the modern world. I hate that. I was just about to say, honestly, I'm way less excited for the movie now. I, you know that he's going to do, like, the rock face at a Starbucks? Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. he's gonna be like what is this god that's exactly what's gonna happen too it's like i didn't even like it when i saw that in like the first thor movie and that's the only time i'd be like you know what i can give someone a little credit for being like this is a good bit if i see it again i'm gonna lose my mind yeah i <sighs> how do we it how comes do we out f- october 21st 2022 how do you feel about doing the rock johnson like as an actor um i mean bad Right? Like, I don't... I feel like he's one of those people that, like, I don't... I can't tell you why I don't like him as much as I used to when I was younger, but I definitely don't. See, I didn't even like him when I was younger. He's in Fortnite Chapter 3. I changed my mind. Um, (laughs) He was in the worst movie I've ever seen, which was Jungle Cruise. I have not changed my mind on that. I think that might be genuinely the worst movie I've ever, like, seen. It just... With a budget like that, how was it that garbage? It was... It was absolutely nothing. Um, he was in those Jumanji movies. Were the Jumanji movies bad? I heard they were just uh, fine. You know, I didn't see him. I saw half of the one that had Nick Jonas in it, and I was like, is that Nick Jonas? Then I looked it up on IMDb, and I was like, huh, that's Nick Jonas. And What's then Nick I, like, Jonas doing? left wherever the movie was playing at, like, the, whatever, like, house the movie was playing at. I, like, ended up leaving. <laughs> um, but, like, that's, that was... I, I saw it was playing. I was like, damn, that sure is an a, 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 a person that I recognize, and then dipped. I respect yep. it. Uh, no, I, I mean, I saw like an hour of the movie um, and it was in like in the background. So, yeah, he's the Fast and the Furious movies are really the only times that I've been like in on a film that Dwayne The Rock Johnson has been uh, in. You're, you're forgetting that's... his best role as uh, the Scorpion King in The Mummy. I wasn't forgetting mm, that, actually. You but... should, yeah, I, it feels like you were definitely forgetting it because you no, didn't I, mention I, it. I had, uh, I had not forgotten that. <laughs> do you have do you not like The Mummy starring Brendan uh, Fraser? I, I like The Mummy starring Brendan F- Fraser. I don't really like The Scorpion King too much. I think that's fair. I, I think I think that, that Scorpion King did not age well. I'm going um, to say Also, it. he was only very briefly in the movie. He was very briefly in the movie. That's fair. And he, then until, of course, he got his own movie. Mm-hmm. Where he, he, he was said, in The, the Mummy the Returns, correct? Uh, that he was like the final right. boss in The Mummy Returns. That sounds correct. Because the first Mummy, it was The Mummy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the second mummy, which was the mummy returns, it was the Scorpion King, which is and a the weird choice. Like, why would you? Why would you change the formula? And then they gave him his own movie. And then I, then there was, so I don't know if you're aware of this or not. Mm. Did you know there's like a, a lot of Scorpion King movies? I is it a really common? Is it a trope? Is the Scorpion King a no? Trope? Not a, no. The Scorpion King. The fuck? Like from like the Mummy spinoff, the Scorpion King, there were sequels. I didn't know there was I, a Mummy spinoff. I don't know called how many. Scorpion I know King. there was at least, um, there's at least a few. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's um, holy shit. Uh, th- yeah. There's at least five. Oh my god. Why? Scorpion King three has Ron Perlman in it. Ooh, I do uh, like Ron Perlman. I-, I will say the Scorpion King sequels do not have Dwayne the Rock Johnson in them. I wonder why. And they are really bad. 
I, I couldn't imagine why Dwayne The Rock Johnson wouldn't have been in those. It's so wild. It was like Scorpion King Book of Souls it was released in 2018. And it appears to be the most recent and fifth Scorpion King movie. Okay. Yeah, it, it just seems like the people who made The Mummy just kept making Scorpion King movies after... I mean, can you blame them? The Mummy. I don't think it's it's not like the directors don't add. This isn't like the executive producers and directors. I think it's just like some of the crew was like. They just kept showing up. They were like, yeah, well, we really liked making the mummy. It was and just... we really liked making the Scorpion King. We could do that again. <laughs> what if we just kept making it? Now, now, hear me out. It didn't do that well. It was a fine movie, you know, whatever. What if we just kept making more of them? Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe they'll get the joke on the seventh. What if time? we lost the star of the movie, who is kind <laughs> of a big part of why people watch the movie, and like you know WrestleMania superstar Dwayne the Rock Johnson? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know how he was like the star of the movie. What if we didn't have him and we just made a sequel anyway? <laughs> oh, it went really bad. We could make another. Oh, that was the worst one yet. What's one more? I can't. And then a decade later, hey guys, uh, how's it going? <laughs> you want to make a fifth Scorpion King movie? <laughs> Dwayne, we, they weren't even good. <laughs> yeah, I would well. love to sit down. Oh, no, Dwayne was not in the fifth one. Oh, Do okay, not worry. I'm sorry. Oh, good. Thank God. <laughs> Do not worry. He was, was not worried. in a sequel. I was worried they were like, Dwayne, we got you back for one last job. You think the people who kept making Scorpion King sequels had enough money to make a fifth one with 2018 Dwayne The Rock Johnson's salary? No, that's fair, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, Fuck that me. is... Man, I I really would love to sit down and watch all five Scorpion King movies. Can we... Can that be a bonus content? Can you and I sit... <laughs> no. Can you and I sit down? We'll watch all five of them in a row. No, that's we'll like 12 it. hours of we'll garbage. We'll marathon it, and then we'll come back with like book, like a book report. We just we need to like find some like compound somewhere that will just like lock us into a room with nothing but like some chips and then the five Scorpion King movies until we've watched them all. <laughs> because otherwise, I don't think I could do it. I, I I think you would have to force me to stay. I feel like after like movie two, I'd be like, ah, let's do it tomorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we'd never go back to it because why would you? Why would? But you if go there back? was like an armed guard outside. I might watch more Scorpion King movies. I might, might, might. I might risk it. I might consider it. I might After take the Scorpion the, King 3 with Ron Perlman, I might run. <laughs> See if I can't, like, duck and weave. How far can you get and how fast? Fuck, Hopefully far good. enough. I would, yeah, I am, I'm very curious as to what the four Scorpion King sequels are like. I, I but they do feel, exist. I genuinely feel like at a certain point, like, they, they have to just be aware of the bit right like they have to know someone has to have told know. them i don't know i really don't i don't think that's true oh my god i love that it's kind of the same people still on board they're like well we could keep doing this yeah they really were, were like what if we just kept doing it like what if i mean to be fair right in that industry you gotta just assume at a certain point take the paycheck fam he was in race to which mountain Dwayne was Dwayne was which I think is a movie that, if I remember correctly, was one of those that they was like a straight to TV movie. Um, and it were like a, a TV. They had, I think, a lot of product placements in it. So they ran it on TV without ads mm. because it had that many product placements in it. Did anyone ever see Free Guy? I just saw it in his uh, in his filmography as a voice. Oh, he's in it. Yeah, he's a voice. I, I do not. I, I, I do think I stand with the Fast and the Furious movies are the best movies Dwayne The Rock Johnson's in. I think that's an easy take. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I don't well, think. Well, he was also in Moana. Moana was really good. That's true. But was, I mean, Moana wasn't, I, I was about to say, was Moana good because of him? And honestly, he did like pretty good. Yeah, like, he, he added did a, good a lot job. to that role. Like, I, I would actually say that he is a pretty, I'm sorry. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, God, what? I just, I'm scrolling down. I saw there's a movie that he was in called Walking Tall. And it says that he's he's there are so many movies he's in as The Rock. Like, that's just oh, what yeah. he's credited as. Oh, that's tons. amazing. Holy yeah, no, shit. Dwayne Johnson has built a career for himself off of being the guy who, yeah, he'll do it. I mean, kind of, right? Like, I- imagine having like the biggest actor in Hollywood that's also going to be like, yeah, I'll be a 
that an extra and free guy. I'll be I'll be crypto the super dog. Yeah, I'll be crypto the super dog. Sure, I'll be the guy that's in Juman- Jumanji. Like he finds these things that like are going to be flops, but have insane studio budgets. And he's like, you know what? <laughs> he was in Rampage. Oh, my God. I forgot he was in Rampage. Oh, he was Rampage. He was he the was one like, rampaging. He was the guy that was friends with the, uh, the gorilla. The, I almost said monkey it was a gorilla. It was a gorilla. They got shot with like George, an asteroid that turned into made him into like a huge white gorilla that was like, I'm so mad right now. What a- and he has to like talk to the gorilla and be like, hey, we can't we got to fight the dinosaur that also got shot with the asteroid that made it huge. And what was the other one? There were three things. Um, I don't know. It was a, it was a wolf. The, it was like a the lizard, reptile. the wolf. And the, oh, yeah, that's and right. Yep. The, there was like a giant wolf for some reason. That game, then, that game was weird. Did you ever play that game? I did not. I was a Nintendo only allowed kid. That's fair. I, I played it. So I used to have uh, my dad used to be into emulators even before like i realized that like oh hey this is what this is uh and he had something called mame which stands for multiple arcade machine emulator and i played so many ancient ass arcade games on that thing it's not even funny uh yeah i had a um sega genesis as a kid and then that was like the only not nintendo console i had because i think my parents were like nintendo that's the one that's good for families and kids Mm. and so that was like the only like they were like, this is the one that won't have sins on it. That's that's what my um, parents did too with the GameCube. Oh, yeah. the game. I mean, look, I'm going to say it, though. The GameCube was free of sin. Uh, I don't think the GameCube could do any wrong. The GameCube had people. There was a lot of weirdly horny shit on the GameCube that was thinly veiled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People would be like, you at least what? my kid's not playing GTA and shooting that people and having sex with hookers i'm like yeah you're right mom i never like shot at people in a video game when i was a kid but i still have a thing for that purple fox from star fox Got, adventures uh, so uh, like uh, crystal? Oh, crystal crystal yeah, I, yeah crystal yeah so like you can't win them all <laughs> and when you try sometimes it might backfire yeah no i and, i <laughs> totally i totally back it and i i do love it to be honest People are concerned about violence in video games, and they really should be concerned about people's fetishes that they're hiding in the video games they produce. I feel like that's a, that's the case with like all of media, though. Like that's also the, a huge problem in um, movies. Looking at oh you, yeah, looking at you, every director in the last oh I don't know ever. Well, at least you know most directors aren't furries. Yeah, because we would have a lot more furry movies. <laughs> Can you imagine? can you imagine if like the director of black adam or something you know coming in theaters everywhere october 21st um get tickets today um anyway (laughs) this is an ad for black adam this episode not not sponsored by black adam but i do wish it was that'd be pretty fucking cool it would be really funny i i think their marketing team is not up on their stuff enough to know that this type of like guerrilla marketing somewhat guerrilla ironic somewhat guerrilla somewhat ironic marketing is way more effective than just putting your trailer on twitter correct having people be like yo black adam's gonna be everywhere <laughs> is way more effective because i'm gonna be genuine with you i'm probably gonna see in theaters it'll be like 10 bucks and it'll be funny yep let me know let you got to report back i'm very curious to see if it's like passable. i'm gonna call it now i am willing to bet 80 percent and 90 percent I'm going to get Nina to go. Ooh, that's I don't think it's even bad. I think that's a pretty safe. Like that's a, I that's think gonna it's going to happen. Yeah. And then that means I'm going to get Noah to go. Yes. Which means that I will be the <laughs> only one who haven't, hasn't seen it, which means I will have to go see it so I can be involved in the conversation. And I'm probably going to be able to get Rob to go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I'm likely going to be able to get at least four people to go see Black Adam 2022 with me in theaters. Maybe not opening day, but right around it. Yeah. Which honestly, at that point, why aren't they just sponsoring you? And that's hilarious to me because, <laughs> come on, like it's it's well, it's em. it's just hilarious. So these things that you can start as a bit, and it's also like, what's the harm though? No, one hundred percent. And like, it's a it's a very low stake. It's one of those like low stakes. Like, oh man, the worst thing that's gonna happen is all my friends are gonna go see this probably perfectly average movie. I saw Eternals in theater. That was the worst movie. Except for Jungle Cruise that I've seen. That bad? In like I, heard a it was bad. I didn't hear it was that bad. 
it was it was i mean i talked about it after i had seen it uh so there's like a whole episode where i just get mad about it for a while it's really bad i don't remember this not because i don't pay attention but because my memory is uh poo poo stinky garbage i mean it was also like a probably like a year ago now and you might not have been there that day mm. um but yeah i i was very very not on board with eternals <laughs> like i think it was straight up ass <laughs> ass it was no three guess. hours long of absolutely nothing and yeah uh just just awful wild like How? good ideas that... for representation that were then turned into actual awful execution oh, no. that muddy the water so bad that it's like you're not actually trying are you're you actually clearly you're worse. not trying i i feel like mm. it, have we talked about this at, a, at any point in the podcast that like i genuinely am at the point in my life where i don't understand how bad movies get made anymore like i it's don't fun. i don't get it and you ever you ever make something and you're like well that kind of sucked but then sure. like, you still had to make it sure but i don't get paid in billions right and that's the thing that sucks especially but like imagine you did because that's what happens <laughs> yeah no you know what that's fair it's it's just like what like uh it's not it's like one guy and they're like you got to do this thing and he's like oh fuck i kind of dropped the ball and then luckily half the time there'll be like 10 people who are like i got it and then there's like 70 people that are like oh yeah you know what this isn't my best work either you know and that's how you get that's fair. a movie like eternal <laughs> that's fair where you pump a hundred million dollars into it and you get some of it most of it sometimes more than all of it back but like it sucks but at what cost um i think well it's so interesting because i feel like i'm trying to remember who who said it is that a oh god a bad director can make a bad movie out of a good script but a good director cannot make a good movie out of a bad script i think is the quote and i, I feel buy like, it and i feel like it's one of those things that like just hire better writers <laughs> like i don't how does someone re like don't get me wrong right i've made work that i'm not like ooh, wow this came out great don't get, i'm not i'm not confused i understand how that happens sometimes but like at least when i go into it i go like wow this script is okay at best or oh wow you know what this really needs someone to punch it up I don't I don't. And if I'm blowing money, I'm blowing a couple thousand dollars, not hundreds of millions of dollars on it. You know? Yeah. But these directors, the pro, the problem is that I'm you're aware of this. These directors aren't like usually sometimes there are, but they're not oftentimes just the people who are at the top of the game, the best of their craft. A lot of times True. it's nepotism, babies and rich kids True. and nepotism, babies and rich kids don't get told no enough, mm -hmm. um, especially not about things that they're making. Mm -hmm. And then so they'll read a script and be like, this is great. And then like, it's not. Or they'll read a script that's actually like you or I would read and be like, this is really good. And they'll be like, um, can we make it so like there's no more gay people or kill them right away? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you're like, what? Why? I mean, that, that's the whole bad director with a good script, though. We're yeah. like, uh, but they're, that's the thing. It's they're bad scripts from the start. The truth is, the scripts were bad from the start. It always makes you wonder, though. And it also makes you wonder, like, I understand that there's probably, like, a total of, like, ten people at the very top of the food chain that are all the ones who are like, no, this is what's going to make it, right? Who, probably. Who is not telling them no? You know? I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like when, when a bad movie gets made, and, like, I'm talking, like, a truly abhorrent movie, mm -hmm. like, most of the time... It, there also is like the big thing that happens with stuff like Eternals and Jungle Cruise, which is the magic of studio interference mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the studio being like, uh, we actually have to protect our brand image. You can't have Dwayne The Rock Johnson say shit when he gets his leg cut off. You have to say have him say mm, that's going to leave a mark. Um, so like I feel like a lot of times corporations and brandings get in the way. And then if you already have a mid script and a mid director and then a company that's like we have to protect our ips then you can get yourself in a situation where the movie just like truly becomes abysmal yeah that's the only and thing if you got a sense. bad script bad studio interference and a bad director oh boy you're screwed from from the word go yeah yeah that's fair i i can i can get behind that it's just I mean, wild to me i could make a bad movie though i would love to uh, here's the thing right I'm I, that's and I think that's what makes me really bitter about it. It's that I'm over here like I could be making these bad movies. Why? And the answer is because I don't have anybody in Hollywood willing to give me a million dollars to do it. But 
Yeah, I could make him just as bad, too. Yeah, I could make him worse. Like, I know enough about how production like suites operate that I could make a bad movie. Mm-hmm. I could not make a good movie, but uh, I could make a bad movie. Yeah, no. And, I, and I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm like an amazing director or whatever. I've I've done a couple of things, but like I I don't think I would make I don't think I would do a hundred million dollars worth of movie justice. Right. Like, I just don't like I don't even comprehend mentally how to spend that kind of money on a, on a uh, movie. They spend it on Twitter ads <laughs> and food, honestly. Uh, the one time I worked on a union set, they flew in or sorry, drove in, I should say, an entire suite of food trucks to feed the crew. But they drove them in from California. Yeah, no, I think that if they put me in charge of catering for like a Marvel movie, mm-hmm. that shit would become five times better. Now, now the food itself would be eh, worse, but the movie itself would be five times better because they'd have fucking money to put to the movie. And I would be like, yeah, hey, give me a couple hundred bucks a day. I'm going to go to McDonald's and that's what you're getting. Sorry, Chris Hemsworth. Shove it up your ass. <laughs> I, I think that's I think that's the key. I think that's how you start. I think that's how you start a good working relationship is you look at Chris Hemsworth and say, Chris, I don't care. Hey, it's not that I don't care. It's that you what do you expect me to spend a million dollars on like veal it's lunch dude you know what i had for lunch today i had a fucking plain bagel and you know what i said that's pretty good sun-dried tomato yeah well no i I had butter on it um but like i was like yeah this was pretty good and that's it yeah so you can do the same it'll be all right buddy now if it's like a big day i'll get like a catering tray from subway damn (laughs) speaking of have you speaking of hundred million dollar movies are you familiar with dwayne the rock johnson's hercules from 2014 i am absolutely not although i did see it on the list oh my god it is i have this is a movie that i I have a, a, a friend of mine two friends of mine they're a couple and they are both it's noah and nina. let's say not the most media literate it's noah and nina known That's for not, not being <laughs> no media literate this Dwayne the Rock Johnson's Hercules, they Wait. walked out of the theater. Oh my god! <laughs> and these are people who will watch like you know, a movie like Gods of Egypt and be like, "That was pretty badass." Oh my god! And they walked out of the theater. I I have never walked out of a theater in my life. I haven't either. I I feel like once I'm sat there, at least like if nothing else, I'm getting entertainment value in as much as I can like whine about this later. You know what I mean? Yeah, apparently it's just like the worst movie. Oh my god! I guess it. I mean, I'm watching like the trailer for it. I mean, it looks relatively good in terms of like quality of you know, yeah, art direction and special effects. But apparently it's just ass. I mean, it's a hundred million dollar movie. If you don't have good flame effects, I'm gonna be really, really upset. That's fair. But like, eh, this movie was so bad that two of my friends who I don't really even trust with movie judgments because I would normally be like, yeah, if they say it's good, I'm like, it's probably like just a generic action thriller. And they left the theater. Oh my God. Uh, Yeah. Hundred million dollar movie. That's amazing. That's that's what I'm saying. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is the king of being in massive budget films that underperform. Yeah. No, I, I... It's which is wild because like it's got to just be for the paycheck, right? Like he's got to just be making the paycheck. Oh, yeah, like absolutely. I mean, he was in the Baywatch um, like reboot. He that movie budget, 70 million dollars gross for US and Canada, 58 million. Jesus. It did make its money back worldwide. But like, yeah, like it just the man is in these movies that they don't like <laughs> He was, he was in Skyscraper. I don't know if you remember that one. Uh, was that the one with the flood? No, it was the one with the Skyscraper. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. How I think the plot is he's in, like, the world's tallest building and, like, like some, like, mega, mega rich guy is like, I'm making the world's biggest building. It's so secure. And Dwayne Johnson, you're the toughest guy ever. you got to be my head of security. And then The Rock is like... Yeah, I'll be the head of security, but then the building gets like hijacked or something. Um, hijack you know, it's it's like I I mean it's like Die Hard. But it's not. Die Hard, right? That sounds a lot but like Die Hard. I won't like. Not it. quite. That sounds like they sure did have a Die Hard of a time. 
Yeah, budget $125 million. Gross US and Canada, $68 million. Jeez, us. Again, it made its money back worldwide, $300, $300 million worldwide grossing. Well, that's the but, thing, right? Is that like, I I feel like there's, there's a certain amount of like, these movies are bad, yes, but like, they're making... He sells to international. I was gonna say, it sells internationally, which is where they're making, they're like banking on the international sales. They're like, America, who cares? I think Dwayne Johnson is... One of those, like, they put him in movies that they're not necessarily banking on international, like, to being international hits. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's going to be, like, a number one hit in, like, China. Mm -hmm. But they're like, you know what? There's enough people in China that'll also watch it that will make our money back. Yeah. I feel like that's exactly, that's got to be it. That's the only thing that makes any sense. Because, like, sometimes you watch a movie and you're like, oh, this was made for, like, specifically, like, a Chinese or specifically, like, an Indian market. And then you'll watch... A, ro- a movie with the rock and you'd be like this wasn't really made for a market but yeah. like it was you know made <laughs> with a lot of money was it was is it tom cruise who's like super popular in china who is it there's like one actor that i know is like notoriously popular in the chinese market i think might it's be. tom cruise my gut says tom cruise even if that might be wrong i mean jackie chan is, is become wildly popular in china recently he's kind of gone over there and just started doing a whole bunch of movies is he do- i didn't realize he was still doing things that's awesome yeah for him. He, he did like a, a big switch over to to doing stuff in, in uh china that's honestly good for him uh so he duane was in uh san andreas budget 110 million it did profit 155 I saying, I actually, domestic i remember saying, people talking decently about san andreas it's not good but like it's a disaster movie did we get disaster is that is that like a, like what was the last big disaster movie that came out san andreas <laughs> or skyscraper uh, <laughs> no there was that one like a year ago about like the moon falling down that's rad i love that i think it was called like moonfall <laughs> i hate that never mind uh, let, let me look it up i, I don't want to like great <laughs> yep, fucking moonfall halle berry Ha- wait halle berry patrick wilson the fuck moonfall 2022 i adore moonfall as a name and i i it's one, again one of those things where like i i look at it i'm like you know what i could have come up with that i could have been that but no they here's play the, uh here's the te- the the those uh, little plot summary for you mm-hmm. a mysterious force knocks the moon from its orbit and sends it hurtling on a collision course towards earth <laughs> Oh, the plot so good. is that the moon fall. The moon go down, moon fall down the hole. Wow, this is a movie that just released February fourth of this year. Oh my god, hundred and fifty. Oh my, oh my god. Don't hundred and fifty million dollar budget. Guess how much it made domestic. Oh, One million dollars. Twenty million. Oh my god. Actually, nineteen. Um, gross worldwide. Not even 60, 59 million. My God. They spent $150 million on a movie called Moonfall. And that's what I'm saying. Like, how is that movie getting made? $150 million? That's Moonfall. What I'm saying. How did that movie get made? Like, who, I, who signed off on this? That's so much money to be like, yeah, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta make this. Yeah. We gotta make Moonfall. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't... I'll back you up on like I don't know how bad movies get made that are bad ideas and then they give them an insane budget yeah because if I was like hey I want to make a movie about the moon falling down it's going to be like an experimental art house one room shot film from the ISS and it'll be like a you know small budget film that we can do as like a I don't know psychological horror a 24 a24 will pick it up it'll be fine Exactly. You could get picked up by like A24, you know, you get a decent budget, not a lot, but, you know, uh, and enough, enough millions to get you in a position where you can make Moonfall. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but if you're like, hey, I want to I want one hundred and fifty million dollars so I can make a movie where the moon physically falls down <laughs> and I, I and people have to make it not do that in the trailer. There's a spaceship that has screw the moon painted on the side of it. No, this might. I I don't. I want. I want to watch this movie. I, this movie looks like it sucks ass. I wish I had energy to watch bad movies. You know what I mean? Like that's a lot of mental like commitment. I have a soft spot. I I'm able to watch a bad movie if it's a really bad movie and it was made like this one. Like mm-hmm, Moonfall mm-hmm. is in my like sweet spot for I could watch this. Mm-hmm. Like this movie was made 
with some semblance of seriousness. They took it seriously. They, they, they saw the yeah. prompt and they were like, no, we're doing this. They're like, yeah, Moonfall. <laughs> and I, I could watch a movie like this. Yeah, you know what? That's it's fair. kind of like the Scorpion King sequels where like they're not like, oh, it's, a, it's Sharknado 3. They're like, no, this is the Scorpion King 4. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Also, it looks like the moon is like alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, why though? Directed by Roland Emmerich, the Independence Day guy. It's so good. He made The Patriot and Independence Day, two movies that are pretty like widely respected. Do people still like The Patriot? Was that like a? a I mean, I don't know, man. I don't. I don't I know fit. The Patriot. I, it was a Mel Gibson movie about like the Revolutionary War. Oh, neat. OK, there was like a guy and he was like like But it was I think the early days of the Revolutionary War where it was still like there was a lot of loyalists. So oh. like being like, yeah, we should like uh, go to war with England was like not like a bad take. like a. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a take that would like get you like killed. Mm-hmm. But now look at us. Oh, he also made Godzilla 1998. So, Yeah. <laughs> No, this tracks. This guy makes ass movies. <laughs> God, I want to watch this. Oh, my God, I got to watch Moonfall. They gave him one hundred and fifty million dollars to make a movie about what if the moon was evil. What? Not physically. Even, yeah, not not just. So wait, you're telling me. So hold on. Back up. You're telling me this the isn't moon, just a, this isn't just Moonfall down. This is Moon villain. I don't know. I haven't seen the movie, but it looks like Moon villain like the moon is alive and it's coming for you didn't legend of zelda already do that fucking yeah but this time it's like made of some weird like it's got like arms <laughs> it's got arms Why I, does I, it have arms i don't think there's a worse film ah! notice how i call it a film because uh it's not a movie to me mm-hmm. it's more than that it's more than that of course of course of course, of course. i love yeah, this is uh, this is to answer your question about the most recent disaster movie. This is it. Moonfall. God damn. I again, I, like that's one of those things that I almost can't even be angry about. You know what I mean? Oh, no. I mean, I hope that this becomes like one of those gems down the line mm-hmm. because movies like this that just fucking blow it in the box office and are just like absolutely. I mean, like you've been saying like this whole time, how did this get made? That is why it's so funny to me. Because in spite of the fact that you're like, how did it get made? It when you watch made. it, you can tell that they had one hundred and fifty million dollars mm-hmm. because the effects, for the most part, look really good. The actors are doing a pretty good job. The sets are well designed. The cameras are operated properly. There's a lot of people who are doing the right job. Yeah, it's just the bones suck. Yeah, no. And that's the thing is, it's like somewhere at the beginning of this at the beginning of all of this somebody fucked up and said this movie needed to be made and that was like yeah, the real problem that's the problem that's the, the problem is that they made the movie yeah like i mean you've worked you've worked on like production sets before and you know that like if someone's like hey dan you're gonna be operating the video board for like you're gonna be technical the technical director of this like movie you're probably going to go in there. They're going to give you your paycheck and you're going to do a good job because yeah. you want to do a good job. You're getting paid yeah. and you care about being good at your job. Yeah, I do like getting money. And so if you were working on Moonfall, you'd be trying your damnedest to do as the technical director, the best, the best job you can job do you yeah. in Moonfall. But the problem is it's still Moonfall. Yeah, the problem is that at the, you're, you're working with nothing. And so therefore you're going to come out with nothing. So like if you're a really good set designer mm-hmm. and they're like, here's your budget make these sets you're gonna make beautiful sets exactly as you're supposed to Mm -hmm. but they're beautiful sets with a large budget for moonfall (laughs) and that's the problem (laughs) i love that movies like that get to me where i'm like i can tell everyone did a good job everyone tried that's that's the one that that's what breaks my heart you get that with um like even uh i even have that that a little bit in like the early star like for like episode one of star wars like everyone tried so hard but like oh my goodness but they shouldn't have that's the thing is that they tried so hard and they shouldn't have yeah you're like everybody on the bottom of this operation like all the people up to the top did what they were supposed to do but the person in charge just made them do something that sucked Mm -hmm, mm mm-hmm And that's what's hilarious to me. Those are the real times when you get to truly blame the director. Yeah. Well, like, no, you did that, man. Right. And it's like, 
like don't get me wrong there are some times where you shouldn't blame your director like sometimes it's not the director's fault but most of the time kind of is one way or another especially it if it's is. moonfall especially if it's moonfall well i would argue that's the writer's fault i mean you know what? let's find out who the writer is who's the writer? oh guess who the lead writer was who's the lead writer the director oh he's roland emmerich <laughs> what's he doing uh he wrote the movie and he was like hey i'm so passionate about this film i gotta also direct it yeah no i mean that makes sense to me oh i mean once you, once you start on the, <laughs> like i said you can't unfall the moon oh and the uh, the the secondary writer here also wrote no wait what he was the composer for alien versus predator the day after tomorrow and 2012 what what the f- wait so he was a composer like, that just this is his like act yes directorial and he, debut, write, he wrote a writing debut rather a tv movie in 2012 uh the movie 2012 which was bad and the movie 10,000 bc which was also very bad so this guy has only composed and written with roland emmerich Wild. so roland emmerich wrote this movie and got the composer to like chime in <laughs> it's his buddy <laughs> it's literally just some guy that he knows and then some other guy who is the screenwriter on The Expendables 4. I'm sorry, there are four of those movies? <laughs> it's not out yet. Oh, okay. oh, I'm sorry. What a, what a fool I am. And Macklemore's Big Surprise, the TV special from 2013. I can't imagine why the moon, Moonfall turned out the way it did. It, it really is a shame. Macklemore's Big Surprise was one of my favorite TV specials of all time. So the fact that the writer of Macklemore's Big Surprise did a bad job on Moonfall. Upsetting. Shocking, even. I can't believe it. I'm so, I'm so mad. Oh, ooh, IMDb wants me to rate Moonfall. I can't. Not yet. Not in good conscience. I gotta watch it. It's on HBO Max. It's 20 bucks on Prime Video. You know, as somebody who has a movie on Prime Video, they do not give a shit. They will put whatever the fuck you want on there. No, but 20 bucks. Come on. Now, nah, dude, I'm so they do not. I mean, care. I know that the the people who put the movies on there set the price, but like Roland, Roland, my man, no one's going to pay twenty dollars to stream your movie. That's the thing. People do, though. Like, I don't understand. So <clears throat> Michelle has a, a film on uh, Prime Video and that is fine. It is a fine. It's fine. Um, very proud of all the work that did go into it. But like it, we knew it was fine. Right. Yeah. People throughout the pandemic especially people were just bored and watching whatever they could get their hands on like they didn't care that it was just some random movie on prime like people were actively browsing and finding it which is insane to me but like how much is it to watch i can don't you, know can, the head. thing is can you rent it on prime because if you can rent it on prime mm. all holds you know all bets are off if you can rent it for like five bucks three bucks mm-hmm. four bucks yeah, by all means. If, if I could rent and just watch Moonfall once on Prime Video for $3, I would do it. But you have to buy it, and that's the problem. You have to pay 20 bucks. I could buy the 4K DVD of it for twelve seventy three. <laughs> it was initially $42, but it's been marked down, believe it or not. Oh, <laughs> uh, God. It makes... It, it honestly... You know what? This kind of This kind of thing makes me want to start writing again, because it's one of those things where, like, if they can do it, like, fuck, dude. There's All you have to do is make Independence Day one time 30 years ago. And you too could ride off the coattails of that success for the next 30 years of That's your career. You only, need oh. to, you only got to do it once. We have been once again joined by uh, one, exiled host Krampus. Krampus returns. Krampus, you are not welcome here. You have shown your true colors on air. You probably like Moonfall. You probably went to see it in theaters and were like, this is actually pretty good. Yeah, more people need to make disaster movies that are just disasters in and of themselves from a production standpoint i i want krampus to stick around krampus is sitting on my lap now krampus did you just poop because you smell kind of bad oh no krampus stinky krampus once again committing an act of um disrespect against the podcast (laughs) by pooping and then coming to sit by me when she still smells just a little bit known enemy of the podcast krampus has once again made landfall made moonfall even I, I I I hate this movie. I love that it exists, uh, but I also do hate very much that it exists. You know, Michael Pena's in it. Who? Michael Pena. Who? Hey, he's an actor. Oh, he was in uh, Fantasy Island, mm. the Blumhouse one. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the one everyone saw. I did. I saw it with Noah and uh, in theaters and, and Nina and Rob, I believe. <laughs> and Emma was there, but maybe it wasn't Emma, actually. Nope, no, no, Emma was Emma was not there for Blumhouse's <laughs> Fantasy Island, but I was. Oh, man, I miss Hi. I get to see him in a few months. I'm excited. This movie was one of those in like that came out in early, early 2020 when Noah, Rob and I and usually Nina, but not always. We're seeing a movie at like once a week for what like a few months. We went to see a movie like all the time. And then, uh, yeah, and obviously the pandemic hit and just we haven't gotten back there yet. Yeah, but I mean, it's hard to go back after that at this point. Yeah. And it's just like I'm so fucking busy all the time. Yeah. I feel um, But yeah, there was a, like a time where we're just like chilling and we'd go see a movie like once a week. That's awesome. That's genuinely awesome. I That's when we saw like underwater and like. Blumhouse's Fantasy Island. We would see like movies that weren't even like necessarily good. No, that'd just be like, yeah, you want to go see like underwater? And we'd be like, yeah. That's the thing, right? Is that like I feel like there's a value in having someone to go just like see a fucking random movie. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Krampus, you're burying your head in shame. Oh, baby. You are so small. You are so small. I also I forget that my cats are not actually small at all sometimes. Oh, how so? Because I will like go somewhere and see a cat and be like oh my gosh look at that kitten and then that's happened today i saw a cat and i was like oh is that like a kitten is it okay and then i was like no i think that's a fully grown cat i just forget that giblet weighs like 12 pounds um but no, he's not overweight he's just like they're just big cats but then uh yeah you'll like turn around and some people's cats only are like a few pounds like three four pound cats and that's like a normal size for some breeds but my cats are just chunky. I love them. just big boned. <laughs> Krampus, are you big boned? Yeah, you're big boned. Because one of Mari's friends has this this cat that's just tiny by comparison. Aww. And it's fully grown and everything. It's just little. Yeah, and then of course there's cats that are like huge, huge. <sighs> Krampus. I um, I don't know. I I feel like I I feel like there's like a standard size for cats. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Um I feel like it's like six pounds. The average cat probably weighs like six pounds. That feels right. That feels correct. And Giblet weighs like 10, 11. Krampus weighs like eight. So Krampus is a little smaller, but Giblet was an unneutered male for a while because, you know, with the pandemic and everything, he didn't get neutered until he was like three. Oof. Imagine so, making it, yeah, to, he didn't spray imagine anything, making it so. to three and then being like, all right, buddy. That's the thing about like animals. They don't have any idea. They got to know after a certain point. No, because they don't have a concept of things like gender like humans do that's fair like a cat's not like i'm a boy because of this they're just like huh penis feel weird i'm about to spray and then they like <laughs> mark their scent on the wall and then you're like well now i'm gonna get rid of that yeah, yeah, yeah. luckily jibba never did that which is good because that sucks but that does seem like it would be the that's worst mostly thing. why i was willing to go so long before you know taking him mm. in but yeah and because of that though he got a lot bigger and he got like really, not really, but he got like kind of ch chubby cheeks and it's very cute. That is very cute. Because male cats, if they don't get neutered, they get really chubby cheeks. I did not know that's what, that's how you, like, I knew that male cats got chubby cheeks. I did not know that was the why. Yeah, it's some kind of like, uh, like gland hormone buildup or huh. something happens and they just develop like extra skin there for, I'm sure it's like a combination of like mating purposes and to like Protect make it so they can get hit in the face. Yeah. Huh. Uh, you know what? I never thought about it, but I if, feel informed. Yeah, because if they're neutered, they don't get those. Hmm. And it, that's why, like, if they're really bad, then the cats probably got old and then wasn't neutered. But once you get them neutered, they, I don't know if they go away or not. I think they might just stay the same size. But Jibba's got kind of chubby cheeks and it's very cute. It makes sense that they would say I, I would be, I would almost be more weird if it went away. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's very cool. I, I, I feel like cats very informed all of a sudden yeah no I, I love like cats are just great i agree i think i think i'm finally wearing michelle down i think we're we're gonna end up getting a cat it's now just a question of like when you know yeah, they're like, just like so funny and like you can if you ever like want a cat you can just get one yeah just the, be like hmm the hard part walk for, outside the hard part for us right now is just trying to find a way to justify getting a cat while we already have a dog Cause like friends, I well that's the thing. I want that they have to be friends legally. Um, oh yeah. If they're not friends, I will throw myself out the window. Um, 
because I need I need them to be friends so that I can believe that there's still magic in the world, you know? And the nice thing is like they will be eventually. Well, that's the thing, is that eventually at worst they will learn to suffer with each other. You know what I mean? That's why like cats are just funny because you get them together and sometimes they'll be like i fucking hate you for like three months and they'll be like you know what you're not so bad <laughs> we're and not so different like, you, you know I. what we're best friends it's just like a it's just like a learning curve they just have to get comfortable well and i think that's the thing that like is is almost scary is like you gotta i don't want like i don't want them to fight like until then you know the nice thing is they they don't fight too much a lot of times especially with cats since they're so like territorial but like territorial like parentheses passive they'll mm -hmm. just like go away yeah that's true yeah like they'll just be like eh, well see ya and we would just like we would do the thing that you know you're supposed to do which is like this is like i would make my office her room yeah you know, or his room whatever yeah make it their room this is where they stay for the most part this is like where their litter box is for the first while that kind of thing yeah i only ever had uh, female cats until I had that one male cat when I was in Austin. Um, and I like it just only ever had female cats. And I didn't really know if there was like that there was a difference or anything. Mm. Great, but you got to be really careful. You're standing close to the power button. Not no, again. No, 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 no. Um, but yeah, I, I think I might prefer male cats. I think they're really fun. I have my two cats have only ever been female. So but that's just a personal like I have no that that is a I have zero context. You know what I mean? Like Giblet is just so fucking stupid. <laughs> like Krampus is very clever and quick and fun and playful and like just very they're very different. And I love Krampus, obviously. She's great. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Giblet is just so dumb that I'm like, dude, you need help. <laughs> like if something happened and like I were to just like release Krampus into the wild, which I would never do. No, of course. I, I'm like, yeah, she'd be fine. She'd be eating a bird like in an hour. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. giblet i'm like no this guy would die today he would die so fast i just like he'd just be so sad about it poor baby yeah where i'm like krampus you wouldn't feel sad about it you would be like my true nature is to kill <laughs> <laughs> my true nature is crime yeah and giblet's like my true nature is just being a little guy my true nature is just be i f you know what though i kind of feel that no i agree too i'm not, that's why i'm not mad at him for it no i i get it yeah it is what it is as someone whose true nature is just being a guy. Yeah, no. Just like being a little guy. Sometimes that's sometimes that is just your true form. Well, I, this is probably as, as natural. A I was just about to say, yeah. Conclusion. I mean, I don't want to make Noah do too much work. I kind of make do. Noah do too much work. I kind of do. Noah, <laughs> do the thing. Noah, can you get uh, Krampus? When you when you edit this, can you put like a Krampus voice like a thing in there that just never moves? You need Krampus her own like audio reader. I know there are <laughs> Krampus gets his own audio track and it's just nothing there. Yeah, it's just there's just nothing there. That's very good. Oh, and then like when when Krampus was kicked off the show, you can just have it like be empty disappear for, for, for a, a while bit, and yeah. then come back in towards the end. <laughs> you know, we did threaten to do like a, a whole host of like, yeah, we're going to really fuck with Noah. And then we just didn't and i'm glad we didn't we started talking about moonfall we started talking about honestly we talked about Dwayne the rock johnson a shocking amount for, for people who don't like particularly care for Dwayne the rock johnson there's lots to be talked about listen it's worth no it's worth being aware people should be informed on <laughs> on Dwayne's the rocks johnson don't talk about his johnson uh i might oh i mean okay 